Welcome to the world premiere of the Nordic Business Forum documentary, The Leaders Who Changed the World. As everyone knows, Nordic Business Forum 2020 was postponed due to the pandemic. But we're super excited today to take you behind the scenes of Nordic Business Forum and show you how this magnificent event is created every year. As a keynote speaker, as a fan of live events, I miss being on stage, I miss being on live gatherings. But at the same time, I have to say that I'm super excited about the opportunity this crisis presents us. Because it is that in the moment of crisis, usually innovation prevails. And that seems to be the case with event industry too. So we will have more than just a documentary today, just to go through the program today. First, we will have a discussion about what will be the future of events. Then we will take a look at the documentary and enjoy that. And then after the documentary, we will have a discussion with the stars of the documentary about Nordic Business Forum and the production of its events. By the way, I know that there is someone else who misses live events too. Uh, for the last couple of years, uh, Pep Rosenfeld has been the MC for Nordic Business Forum. And now Pep has something to say. Hello to friends, family, guests and organizers of the Nordic Business Forum. My name is Pep Rosenfeld from the Boom Chicago Theater here in Amsterdam. And you might recognize me from hosting in uh, the Nordic Business Forum in Helsinki two years in a row. Stockholm two years in a row. Never did host in Oslo, though. I, I don't know what Norway has against me. I don't think I ever pissed off any Norwegians. Anyway, here we are in this virtual space. And while it kind of sucks to be only together virtually, I, I do feel like once we got over the shock and the, the horror of dealing with this situation, I think we're all doing a very good job of getting through what sometimes seems like a nightmare. And I'm not trying to exaggerate. I don't mean like, oh, it's a nightmare. I mean specifically one nightmare in particular. That dream that we've all had where you go to work and when you get to the office, you realize you're not wearing pants. Well, most of us are working at home. And if you're like me, when you work at home, no pants. Well, it's a pleasure to be welcoming you to this documentary, Leaders Who Changed the World. It's a look behind the scenes at the Nordic Business Forum. And let me tell you, as someone who has been behind the scenes at the forum in Sweden, in Finland, just those two, just those two. As someone who's been behind the scenes, I still don't know how they create the magic they do. The attention to every detail, the real concern for the guests and getting together amazing speakers. It, it's, it's a minor miracle that happens three times a year. I mean, just, you know, two times for me. Anyway, Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the documentary, even if we can only be together virtually. And hopefully, cross our fingers, we'll be together next year, whether it's in Oslo, Helsinki, probably just one of those two. Enjoy the documentary. <laughs> Thank you, Pep. And it really looked like Pep was enjoying the relaxed dress code for this <laughs> virtual event. But thank you very much for that, that image, Pep. Nordic Business Forum will be back live in 2021. And the lineup will be including Yuval Noe Harari, Indra Nui and Francesca Gino. But actually, we cannot know uh, quite yet what is happening in 2021 since 2020 changed the whole event industry profoundly. And 2021 probably is not getting back to where we used to be in 2020, but something different. So next we're going to talk about the future of gatherings, uh, the future of event industry. And we have with us Anne here in the studio. We also have Christoph Hans and Hans Peter remotely. Welcome to every single one of you. Hi. So let's begin with Hi. Anni. Anni is the CEO of the Finnish Fair Corporation, the biggest trade fair organization, organization in Finland. And 
And the physical building that you have, the Finnish Fair Center, that doesn't virtualize very easily. But you were very quick to react and, and created a studio format. How was that? Oh, the studio is one example of our agility. And, uh, you know, we have been working with digital services for a long time. So that kind of a foresight enabled us to act rapidly. And currently we have a studio, we are running virtual events and this autumn we will uh, run the biggest cultural event virtually in Finland. That's the book fair. Oh, that, that's so fantastic. And, and being part of that myself, thank you for mm -hmm. <laughs> doing that. And, and let's go to Christoph Koms. Uh, Christoph Koms is the managing director and COO of Bits and Pretzels Festival. Bits and Pretzels is an event that gathers uh, 5,000 founders, investors and startup enthusiasts to Munich around the Oktoberfest. Obviously not this year in an uh, ordinary format. But Christoph, uh, Bits and Pretzels actually scaled up this year. Yes, exactly. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, Bits and Pretzels scaled up. Um, we, it took place last week and when we wrote our concept uh, and we decided to let it take virtually, we also decided to change the, the format. And now it was instead of two and a half days, it was six full days. We had speakers, masterclasses more than we ever had before. Also participants more than ever we had before because it was application only so far. And uh, so, yeah, it changed a lot this year when we went virtual. Well, uh, the event industry is really uh, reacting to this change. And we have Hans Jensen, who is the CEO of the Denk Productis. And Denk is the market leader in leadership seminars in Netherlands. And, and Hans, you have been highly innovative with seminars. Uh, can you tell us about Skybox? Yes, we always uh, we have a portfolio of multiple events a year, and uh, the audiences are also like one or two hundred people. Uh, and there were in September we could still uh, do physical events uh, and still comply with all the uh, the restrictions. And we decided to make this one and a half meter distance, which is very uh, important in Holland, uh, a strength instead of uh, a weakness. So we booked the biggest venue uh, we could get. Uh, moved away over 2,000 seats and installed back 150 personal skyboxes, which is a comfortable seat. Uh, you have a table, you have a plant. We even had a fake goldfish for you. It's a very <laughs> comfortable setting to uh, uh, to do your event, and it was a real big success. People really liked being together again in an, in, a, in an atmosphere that felt more luxurious than they'd ever been before. It looked like Netherlands turned into Finland for one day, <laughs> like really <Yeah>. social <laughs> distancing. The customer experience must have been uh, awesome. And then obviously we have Hans-Peter Siefen, the co-founder of the Nudic Business Forum. Uh, Hans-Peter, are you experiencing withdrawal symptoms for not being able to do the seminar this year? Well, I guess so. Hello, hello. The the red nose is here. Uh, I should have been in the studio, but got the flu, so need to keep distances clear, even if already got, got a negative COVID test result, but happy to be here anyway. H happy Thank to you. have you here. And Nordic Business Forum and Oslo Business Forum was postponed to 2021, but you ran an online event uh, on the day Oslo Business Forum was supposed to take place. So what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, we, we ran indeed uh, two weeks ago uh, a big online event from Oslo, which was, however, participated by uh, plenty of people also from Finland, Sweden, uh, Estonia and all, all around the world. We did one also in May, uh, which was quite a bit, quite a quick iteration in May. And, and the difference now two weeks ago was that we also had a small audience in the studio. It was done at at an expo in in uh, Oslo uh, in Lindlestrøm, and we had a hundred people seated in front of the stu three studio stages on which we were we were running the show, and it really created a much better atmosphere. You could feel the audience uh, 
cheering for for a good speech and and reacting to anything that was said on stage so i think that was maybe my biggest takeaway that that's something we should try to keep now this week we couldn't have 100 people in oslo since since the restrictions for events went went tighter uh, but even even with a small audience if built in the right way i think it's very important to have a live audience in place as well Let's continue with Anni. Uh, where do you see the future of events going? Uh, there will be big changes uh, since we are now living in a disruption and we have already now heard a couple of examples about the changes. Some of them will be permanent and some will vanish and kind of uh, become in a new new format. But overall, we have actually been uh, making a lot of research uh, about face-to-face -face encounters and how people value them. And that is kind of uh, encouraging to the whole events industry. Uh, like, for example, in Finland, 74% uh, of all events visitors and exhibition visitors would love to attend a live event when it's possible. But anyway, like I said, there will be changes. Hybrid events will be kind of a, uh, a standard, I, I believe. And it's you always have to look at the positive things with this mm. type of disruption. Christoph, what do you see in the future of events? I fully agree, basically, to what Ani has just said. Um, we see, from Bits and Pretzels' perspective, we see hybrid events as the new normal. normal. Um, there will for sure be, like a still, of, depending on the country, um, a period of just virtual events, uh, according to the legal restrictions that we all are facing. But um, in our view, in my view, hybrid events, that is the future. Of course, the definition is not clear yet what a hybrid event is. Uh, I see personally hybrid more than just a studio setup in a room. Uh, people should definitely be attending uh, physically and locally. Now, Hans, how, how do you see that? Where are we going to? Yes, I see uh, in the last few months, I see also a shift in the digital events that are being organized. You know, there were, uh, I think before summer, they were less, uh, they were like uh, plenary events where we were just a viewer. And I see more and more concepts where people try to be, uh, the, where the organizers try to make actually engaged participants. So by by not making them passive viewer, but by really engaging them in breakouts in networking uh, sessions. And that's of course something that's uh, very much easier to do digitally. If you have a thousand people, you can break them up into groups of ten with just one click, and you cannot do that in a in a real situation. So I think. And that will be the, the key to really keep people glued to the screen because they won't watch an event for eight hours. They will not do that. Hans Peter, where do you see this thing going? Well, uh, I, I agree to everyone who, who already spoke. Uh, we have actually been running, as probably most of the viewers know, we have been running Nordic Business Forum as a hybrid event since uh, 2014. Although I just learned the hybrid word, uh, at some point of this COVID-19 <laughs> crisis. So, so well, it's we, a popular we word a, now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, and that's the future. <laughs> so we have been live streaming our events uh, with a networking opportunity in it as well, and all kinds of things uh, since 2014 from Oslo, uh, Stockholm and, and Helsinki. And, uh, and the audience on the live stream side has been uh, big, it has been pretty big it has been growing a lot but i think it will will grow much faster after after this crisis and uh, and uh, yeah like hans said uh, there are some benefits also to the digital um, attendance uh, the breakout breakout rooms example the easiness of it which hans described but i i still think that uh it is it is still next to impossible to build the same actual atmosphere and the whole experience uh, which we can do uh, when when we attend physically um, but i think this will this will continue to live together and and uh, we as well we will in the future most likely have a few different products which only run in digital form and and then basically more or less everything else probably in hybrid i think so one that's of the, how it will be 
Yeah, one of the hardest things to translate into digital formats is those like accidental social interactions or social interactions or atmosphere, as as Hoppe said. Have you been trying to find solutions for that part also, Anne? Oh, that's one of the things we are currently heavily working on at. It's kind of a how do you facilitate fruitful and also effective in a business-wise effective encounters between people. There you need to have really, uh, you know, psychological and uh, different kind of multi-science research to be based on. So it's definitely worth working with. Uh, Christopher, have you sought this out? <laughs> uh, kind of, I hope, but the journey is not uh, uh, the end yet. At the end yet, um, for, to go one step back, we when we initially thought about um, bits and pretzels, virtual bits and pretzels, back in let's say April, uh, we started also to fund found a new company which is only focusing on virtual event software production and the corresponding consulting part to it. Um, because we felt that we need to develop new concepts, new formats of digital networking and interaction ourselves because we couldn't find it on the market yet. And the result is uh, the company called Mingle Cloud that we've recently founded. And with Mingle Cloud and the platform that we provide and also for bits and pretzels, we have different new methods of the, um, creating this kind of serendipity that you were asking for this uh, this meeting uh, for a few mm. minutes just randomly and we had for example a roulette uh, on our platform last week uh, where in total over the week almost eighty thousand minutes of networking on the roulette took place and also our participants they could open vi uh, video rooms breakout rooms themselves to uh, discuss problems topics whatever uh, further, and that helped us a lot to kind of get this interaction between the people. Hans. And was the, the, the feedback was very positive. Yeah, Hans, uh, what's your take on this topic? Yeah, we I think we made a kind of a, a kind of crazy invention by accident uh, a few months ago. Uh, we also do some in company events, and people also in, in companies they they complain that all the digital meetings are very effective. You know, they're for uh, specific purposes, but the informal part doesn't take place anymore. Uh, so what we have done, we've developed a, a series of online escape rooms that people can do at their company. So uh, you also get like a roulette, like Christopher said, but you get together in a, in a virtual team and you solve puzzles. And it, it's, it's like of the, it's, it's an alternative for the informal drink, but the informal drink, you've done it two or three times and you've done a Kahoot quiz, but you need to be very uh, creative and dynamic about that. And uh, in some way, this digital escape room was a real hit in Holland. So uh, we also had to, uh, that's the only uh, uh, factor in the company that we have a waiting list right now. So that's really oh. good to, to have. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. Hans-Peter, uh, uh, social interaction has been always in the core of Nordic business form also. So yes. how, how are you approaching this problem? Well, I, I think there is so so much innovation taking place, like everyone already mentioned as well, new concepts, uh, and it's uh, it's quick testing. Um, everyone finds something that works, and and also the software developers are doing a lot. We we as many of the viewers know, we have been actively um, partnering with Prella, which is a matchmaking tool. Uh, or nowadays on event app and and they lost all of their sales when the when the uh, covid uh, crisis hit europe uh, basically overnight all of their bookings for the whole year disappeared but then they pivoted very fast into virtual virtual events building building a virtual event platform on top of what they already had done and they are on track to triple their revenue this year but compared to last year uh, so it's growing very fast and a lot of recruiting happening happening so so innovation is and, and quick iterations quick tests those are the key to find the best means for networking and social socializing on on virtual or hybrid events as well we we can see a lot of innovation in the tech space for uh, this technology for events and and social interaction but i'm 
all also like trying to figure out the uh, innovation in presenting stuff and, and even like trying to figure out what this medium is. Because I have a background in radio and television and doing a lot of keynotes. It's, it's not a radio show. It's not a television show. It's, it's not a keynote anymore. But what, what is it then? What's your take on this, Anni? Are you now talking about hybrid events? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah. it's all of them, and mm-hmm. it's like like sometimes it's more like uh, one person talking to another, and one times it's like a huge event. But but mm-hmm. I I don't think we have really figured it out what it is yet. Mm. Oh, that is a tough question. Uh, but anyway, I think the basic thing is understanding the needs of a specific uh, event or meeting, whatever, and then you try to find the best possible medium to, you know, kind of uh, make that happen. For example, uh, technical type of meetings, you know, people attending from different countries, those will be absolutely best handled in a virtual meeting. But like we heard from uh, Hape before, you have now experienced that uh, running a hybrid event is much more kind of a uh, better uh, when you have the live audience, even not with the larger scale. So kind of a finding the right medium for to, to fit the needs for that event is a key. So there is no one single answer, I'm afraid to say so. Mm. Uh, Christoph, uh, what's your take on, on the on the medium? How how do you see uh, uh, these events, virtual events, as a medium? Uh, your question indeed is very interesting, and as Annie said, the answer is not that easy. In my opinion, it also depends on the on the event itself, the setting, um, the needs of the participants, the need of the organizer. Um, but um, my personal view on that is that as also in virtual events, we need to play with emotions. Uh, we need to make uh, bring creativity to the table. It rather looks for me like a TV production, uh, like a professional TV production, also in terms of the studio setting. And when people are dialing in uh, from from somewhere in the world, I may the so to say the experience that sometimes also for the speaker it's not so easy suddenly to speak in front of a camera instead of speaking from an, uh, from an audience in my view is that for example the youtube uh, uh people that create the youtube they are the best to speak in front of cameras uh, so I, personally i compared always somewhere between like a studio setup tv production and youtubing so to say yeah. hans um, what's your take on this yeah. Yeah, I think for many speakers, as you mentioned, Henry, is there also it's a responsibility for them to adjust the way they address their audience. Uh, we had one speaker uh, who had a one hour talk with t- key, uh, 10 key insights on leadership, and he changed it around into uh, a quiz where he had 10 questions to the audience where they could uh, answer a multiple choice and he would give the, uh, the correct answer with the research behind it. And by doing that, everybody was really engaged because you, if you participate as a, a quiz participant, you want to know why your answer was wrong or you want to be confirmed why your answer was right. And it was really easy to keep one hour of interesting digital events going with one speaker only. So speakers can also do innovative things to stay uh, creative in the way they engage their audience. Well, wow. that's that, that's very interesting. Also, like, mm-hmm. makes me figure out that what are some other forms, like, like if we think about like crime stories. Um, there's a murder in the beginning, and it's mm-hmm. uh, it's solved in the end. So probably we will, <laughs> on the online world, see that also mm-hmm. happening in seminars. Okay, let's not mm-hmm. get carried away with this. But Hans Peter, how do you see the medium? Well, we we have been trying to figure out what are the key differences in between producing scripting and and designing the drama for for a physical event uh, and and now for a virtual event and and we have been consulting some tv producers and and that that sort of people as well uh, benchmarking a lot of uh, every week a couple of uh, events that are run somewhere in the world to get new ideas and insights on what from our point of view works and what doesn't but it's also very important to understand what's the like i think Anni said what's the what's the uh, aim what's the aim of of this specific case 
how much of interaction we need or want in it uh, or or w what's the case really uh, if there is a need to divide people into breakout rooms etc then you also need to make different technical technical decisions on what software to use and and all of that stuff so um, I I, I think it's a, it's a quite interesting puzzle, and it has been even if the times has been uh, have been really tough for for anyone in the events industry. I believe it has been at the same time quite exciting to learn so much new, and the speed of innovation has been uh, has been probably in six months more than otherwise would be done to this part of of uh, events, the digital side of them. In otherwise, in five years' time, I would say. So it has been really interesting and fast. In in Finland, uh, Finland, there is virtually no support for the event industry. Uh, how about in Germany and in Netherlands? You mean support from from what side? From, from government, government side? Or? Ah, yes. No, there is no support yet from government side and virtual events in Germany. Yeah. How, how about in Netherlands? Oh, yeah. Well, in in the Netherlands, we have uh, a very good uh, like entrepreneurial support for each. Um, uh, industry that has more than 20% uh, turnover drop, which is, uh, of course, the event industry. So I, I have to say uh, I'm really lucky to live in the Netherlands because uh, there are some real good reg uh, rules and support that will still carry on until June 2021, which will, of course, be less in the uh, compensation, but still there is some support for uh, industries that are really hit on the long run. So really happy with that. Thanks, Mark Rutte. Yeah. <laughs> Anja, do you expect that to change in Finland? No, unfortunately not. Mm. But anyway, I just want to mm. add that uh, we got some innovation uh, financing from uh, Business Finland. And with that 100,000 euros, we built our virtual platform. Yeah. So it is something, but not enough. Mm. Uh, but I'm afraid it will not change. Well, last question. Uh, if we register in an event uh, in 2030, 10 years from now, what are we participating on, Christoph? <laughs> uh, fingers crossed, COVID-19 is gone uh, by then. Uh, so I really hope I will be registering for a physical event, but uh, which has very high quality on site, but which also gives me the opportunity to um participate in case i'm for example still on the way to the office or one day in home office or so on so i can basically interact and uh, join this con all conversations from remote as well hans yes i i totally agree i think usually when we go to a, a an event you learn all kinds of things and then you apply them in your own business but none of the uh, organizers or the other attendees are part of that I think if you have new events, you can have this, you know, this physical kickoff, which is really good to have everybody started. But if you can share your ideas later, uh, look back on the talks, have Q and A's with the speakers one month after, all digital, you can really get a better result from the events too. Hans Peter. Well, I, I think the digital form of of uh, participating will will change the most. Um, I mean, it it will it will likely uh, um, everyone will likely understand what are the real benefits for that type of participation, and and there will be a lot of innovation around it. So it will maybe not in the same way, but as an experience, it will become closer to how it is attending physically maybe in different means but anyway i believe that the value of digital participation will rise immensely by 2030. Anne. oh i think the uh, heart of the event will be face to face and physical but uh, like said before there will be a lot of business opportunities in the digital era as well so that kind of a provides for the community which is related with the specific event an opportunity to network and change ideas also uh, outside of the physical event and uh, what will be uh, very very important for everybody uh, in this industry uh, sustainability that will not change and that will be even more important in 2030. 
Thank you very much for our panelists. Thank you, Anni. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Hans. And thank you, Hans-Peter. And we we'll look forward to 2030 and also 2021. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As we all know, or probably know, uh, the story of Nordic Business Forum began from Jyväskylä in the year 2010. The first event had 700 attendees. But last year, hear this, last year there were 7,600 attendees from over 50 countries. That's amazing. And 17.4% of them being CEOs. As I said, the event is huge and there are over 900 people putting it together every year. And the 2019 event will go down in history as the last event before the pandemic. And the 2021 event is the first post-pandemic. But what happens behind the scenes? What happened in 2019 behind the scenes? Some of us has been part of it, but uh, still a fraction of all the things that are going on in the two years leading to the event is visible even for the speakers and moderators. But now we get to see more of it. Uh, and here it is. The leaders who changed the world uh, behind the scenes of Nordic Business Forum documentary is live now. Enjoy. <laughs> The reason we are drawn to the theater to watch stories is because the human brain loves clarity. Every time I come to Finland, people always warn me if I'm speaking publicly. They always say, oh, don't expect a reaction. The audience will be enjoying it enormously, but they won't smile or they won't react or they won't ask questions. I have to tell you that's not been my experience. Maybe there are places where the audience is more lively, but I have rarely been to a place where there are, there's such a deep interest in what's happening in the rest of the world. A clear story will win every time. But how do we tell a clear story? the 10th annual Nordic Business Forum. The first war were in our home city, Juvaskula. I still remember when we organized our first evening seminar. We had 80 people in the room and tickets cost 10 euros. It's uh, four weeks from today. That's the exact timeline. Long days now, so you know that it's coming. And I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's going to be a good event. We just discussed last evening with Ville that we made our guess on who, who of the speakers will be the top three rated by the customers, and it was, it was a hard job. My guess is that we will have three female speakers at the top this year. Yeah, I, I kind of trust that everything goes well and of course it might also not, but then that's also fine and you learn from it. The main explanation for this miracle is you, the thing which NBF needs the most. And you have been such for it for these 10 years and we feel we are just in the beginning still. Now the state seems free, yes, so timing let's works. start. Let's do so. The idea and how we got started was due to an accident. I had a, an injury and so I was at the hospital and I had some time to think. So for some reason I started to draft out ideas about the uh, business training 
operation in the future. We also had the very first evening seminar in, I think it was November 2008. We filled in the room of 80 people, but they were mainly friends. And I think the only adult might have been my father. So that's how it was. What has been the most important event for us, and I think it's the first one, the 2010 event with local speakers. We had a goal of selling 500 tickets and we sold 700. We didn't take any, any uncalculated risks, at least from my point of view. We had already started working on what we would do in 2011. As we were thinking who should be the headliner, we had the idea that someone international and then one winter evening I got the idea that, hey, Al Gore would be a good bet. And, and I called Yuri and Yuri said that, hey, yeah, that's a good idea, but Al Gore doesn't go to Jyväskylä. Next morning at the office we started Googling for a phone number and we found one and made the call. Uh, someone answered at the office and I pitched. I think that was maybe my first business call in English. And after six months or so, Al Gore confirmed that he will actually arrive to Jyväskylä. Leading news magazines in my country, Newsweek, uh, named Finland as the single best country in the world to be born in. So that got my attention. <laughs> 2013 was a really good year. I think it was one of the best events. I think we got to surprise our customers in some new ways. And Actually, we made a loss in 2013. We kind of lost sense of budget while we were building, building the event to be super. But that was a good investment since the event grew from 3,300 to 5,300 from 2013 to 2014. So Nordic Business Forum was organized here at Jyväskylä Expo for the first four years. I know exactly when uh, Nordic Business Forum came to my attention for the first time. It was in 2014 when Nordic Business Forum had just moved from uh, Juvascula to Helsinki for the first time and Arnold Schwarzenegger was one of the speakers. After the event had ended, I um, bumped into Yuri Linden, one of the founders. And Yuri was there greeting customers, being available, you know, to have a chat. And I, of course, wanted to compliment him on, uh, on such a great event. And we exchanged our business cards and I said that I, I'm, I've been in the events business for a long time, so it would be nice to compare notes. And I remember thinking that maybe I have some contacts that, that might be useful for Nordic Business Forum as well. I hadn't originally even thought that I would start to work there soon, but I knew immediately that I loved the uh, level of excellence that the event was uh, put together. So this is our office, the headquarters of Nordic Business Forum. Kitos. Hello. So we're, we're two weeks away right now. There's a saying that I really enjoy. You know, we don't rise to the level of our expectations we fall to the level of our training. I'm really excited about the opportunity. I just know that I still have training to do before I hit that level of confidence that I want to have before, you know, going on the main stage. Tässä kaikki on edes kysymys. Mutta hei, kiitos tosi paljon, että tulitte. Toivottavasti tämä oli kivaa ja ollaan yhteydessä. Kiitos.
given that I love talking and love speaking, I thought that this could be a phenomenal opportunity to get to speak on, on a pretty huge stage at the start of my, my career and my speaking career. I didn't, you know, do my video in any fancy way. I think I was quite honest. I was quite myself and did a very short three minute video about what I like to talk about. And that was enough to get me through to the qualifiers. Okei, okay, hyvä. Siellä oli semmonen. Very good. Jaha, meillä on alkamassa treeni kahden minuutin päästä. So we will start according to the clock. The theme of Nordic Business Forum 2019 is growth. And on behalf of Nordic Business Forum, I hope you will have a great time. Moi, hey Nazir, how are you doing? Okay. Hey, uh, hey, you called me about this, um, uh, these lunch vouchers. So uh, let's do so. I'll, I'll let Hedy know. And hey, I'm just waiting for your food here at the Holiday Inn. Yeah, but I can come. I can come by. <laughs> Things seem to be going really smoothly. Yeah. Awesome, and, and you get some food. So I also get some food. Yeah. That's the most important. Part. Yeah, exactly. Well, that is very important. <laughs> yes. I think my role at Nordic Business Forum is one of the most inspiring roles there could be because we get to impact so many people positively. And I think it also requires you to, to really feel it from the bottom of your heart and that you really want to put your passion into it. What does ballet mean to you? Ballet is everything. Didn't you see that performance right here? Yes, certainly well did. Thank you, that's great. Ladies and gentlemen, ballerinas from Lima, Peru. Cool, that's correct. Thanks. You know, I think the most important thing that leaders can do to get their employees working better together is to build trust, to help them build genuine trust with one another. That's really the foundation of teamwork. And the only way to do that is to get people to be more vulnerable, more open with one another about who they are, warts and all, whether their strengths and weaknesses. If a leader wants to avoid internal competition, the bad kind, um, he or she has to make sure that everyone is working for the collective good. When a manager runs an organization in silos and rewards one person for good work and another person, even if they don't cooperate, it just encourages that kind of behavior. So a manager has to say, listen, we're all in this together. We have one goal and I'm not going to allow people to be focused on their own individual needs. I'm going to focus on the collective good of the team. That has to come from the leader. Well, I started as a student in 2017. I was actually in the special services team, which was in charge of the warehouse. So I was just a normal student back then. And then last year I decided to become a team leader where I get to do a 10 month leadership program. And now I got to do my internship with Nordic Business Forum. And one of my main roles is to be in charge of the warehouse. So that's how I ended up here. I would say it's one of the most hectic areas of the whole event. You're never bored. I have been here for three days now and I still have four more days to go and I think it's the best thing. In terms of the student operations, the year starts um, very soon after the main event has, has ended. And we start in student operations by offering the students who were working with us in the previous event a chance to sign up or apply to become a team leader for customer service teams in the next event. In addition to the 16 team leaders, we have about 300 other students. Uh, we have some um, minis here together now. Uh, this is a special moment because it's the moment when the core team gets to see the students for the first time. Yeah, and my name is Hape, and great to have you all uh, working with us for the magnificent event. I'm mainly uh, at the tech space, working with the MCs and the speakers, but also there for you for any, any needs. So let's enjoy. <laughs> I wanted to do that again since it didn't go too well in the rehearsal today. Let's go for the dinner now. 
then we can, can come back to do the other things. Oh, how are these guys doing? Let's see. And what my experience has been is that business tends to reflect, to some extent, the nature of the country. And Finland is an integrated, it is an accepting, it is a tolerant country. It is a place where, in business, you are accepted for who you are and expected to perform to the level of your abilities. And I think that what you see reflected in the companies is exactly that. In the morning, fixies here at the networking area have been doing those for, for two hours now already. This one we forgot. And then later on today, it's mostly about rehearsals, both at the live stream studio and on main stage. It begins to come together. In the whole preparation phase, you need to be organized. You need to have good time management skills. One of the biggest mistakes I feel is that people think that they can organize a successful big event in three months. And we start building an event two years before the event begins. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask. How, how do I say that again? Jyväskylä. Jyväskylä? Jyväskylä. And the, the salmon soup, it's got a K, a K sound in it, right? Keitto. Keito. But it's like it's like la keito, right? There's like a lohi keito. A lohi keito. Lohi keito. Right. Your vascular. So I met my co-founding partner Yuri in early 2007 at a marketing lecture at the University of Jyväskylä. We seated next to each other, or there was one common friend in between us called Sami Itani. And uh, Sami introduced us on both sides of him. Hape, this is Yuri. Yuri, this is Hape. You are both businessmen, so maybe you should talk. And, and so we started talking. There are 7,655 people here from 54 countries. That was my message to you today here in Helsinki. Thank you. Time, I probably spent between 80 and 100 hours working on my speech, which in the final was 15 minutes. For every single minute, there was six, seven hours of work. I think it's, it's, it's underestimated how much work can, can go into it if you really, really, really want to sort of be top, top level. The biggest way to actually be influential in speaking is by talking about something that you're really passionate about. Because passion is contagious. And then also understanding that the human brain is wired for storytelling. We love stories. Thanks. Welcome here. Hi. Hi. Hello, Ruth. Hape. Hello, Ruth. Claudia. Hello, Claudia. Hape. Hape, hello. Azul. Hello, Azul. Hape. And Ivana. Hello, Ivana. Kitos. Kitos. Lots of kitos. Kitos. <laughs> Muchos kitos. Muchos kitos. Muchísimo. Very good. Should we take a look at the stage? And Ivana would be standing on which end? 
Okay, then we could be in the center, so there is more space, but a bit that way, yeah. Again, or? Here for probably about 8.30. Nice. If that suits you, does that sound good? Sounds very good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank Thanks for this. Yeah, Thank you. You can get the sense of the scale of the complexity and, and the number of the stakeholders if, if you take a look at the number of people who actually work during the event week for the event in different roles. And the number is about 900, 950 people. You need to coordinate it all to work and of course delegate the responsibilities and empower people to make decisions. For that reason, you also need to try to keep it simple enough. Otherwise, the quality might suffer a lot. Time to do the rest of the work. But dinner also, I think. What time was the dinner? It was half an hour ago. I think we have still 30 minutes. Yeah, and stay there, stay there. Let's turn it around, actually. Okay, there we go. Good. Thanks. common denominator for all good leaders is that they truly care about the people they work with. And among the things that my best leaders have done uh, is that they've made it very clear that they believe in me. And they've uh, given me challenges that I never thought I would be able to pull off. But they saw something in me that I might not have seen even myself. And that's something I try to do as a leader for others as well. Everything that I want uh, you to think of when you work in this event now is, is really how we can make our guests feel special. So stand up and let's see what happens after that. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Emily. Behind me was a team of 50 friends okay. and family members and, you know, a very supportive girlfriend and now fiancé who gave me feedback so many times on my presentation. <laughs> If you are a powerful, impactful, influential leader, it is your job to create clarity even when you cannot see. Is the seminar hall services ready for opening the doors in about 35 seconds? We just have to be very kind of brave to say like, hey, please come, like, like I can help you find, get your code quicker. Oh, lovely. There are so many great examples of how smooth and energizing experience comes to life at our events. And it starts with uh, when customers are arriving, that there's somebody who opens the door for them and makes them feel welcome and pays attention to them with a smile and a friendly word. That's the beginning of the journey for them on site already. Anything that we do with the customers, from uh, the cloakroom experience, where it's not only storing their jackets and luggage, but actually doing little magical things while uh, the customers are watching the, the speeches and then getting your jacket back so that uh, somebody has fixed the button that has come off or something. It's, it's a multitude of those things that keep happening when the students are driven by creating smooth and energizing experience. Another principle that I've liked a lot is treating the customers or anybody else actually as your best friend. So that kind of puts a really nice, positive, uh, easy approach to, to all the customer interactions. Oh, hey. <laughs> 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 Just 
the quality of conversation really impressed me. And I've been traveling around the world trying to talk to people about changing our attitudes towards the environment, towards climate change, and really finding solutions so that we can get on with living in a sustainable world. So I'm very pleased by what I've seen here at this conference. So each year I, I feel overwhelmed. It's cool to see it all happen when you have worked on it for such a long time. When the first customers start to arrive to the venue, what needs to be on place, what needs to happen, has everything been remembered? And I try to think through the whole event chronologically to make sure that I'm confident. Of course, things will go wrong, but at least we have tried to take care of it. No, I'm excited. I woke up pretty early and uh... I did a bit of a workout uh, in the morning, then I went through my presentation once and that felt really good. It's quite a new thing for me as well. It's really, it's something that I'm really grateful for because I get to do something that I really enjoy. I think from version one to what it's now, it's probably like maybe between 40 and 50 iterations. So it's always been getting better and better and better and I've been tweaking it. I mean, I've gone through that final iteration in my mind, visualized it as like Formula One drivers do. So I've visualized myself being on stage, delivering the full talk. So uh, yeah, there's quite a bit that goes into it. Good. Ready. Ready for game time. Gotta. What's your situation? Hey. Let's meet up. Ready to rock. Yeah. Rakkaako homma? Joo, nyt, nyt on silleen iisi, että nostin kaapelit sullekin valmiiksi edellisessä pimeässä. No niin. Niin nyt kun markkinas vetää, niin mulla on se stäkki siinä, niin se helpottaa mun sitä. Mä katson he mun koneen kohta sulle valmiiksi. Ja. Best way to overcome, you know, nervousness when getting on stage is just by doing a lot of presentations. So that's why I actually joined Toastmasters at Google. Ten minutes before I go on stage, I'm probably going to go to the bathroom lock it and do a few sort of meditations and, and, and focus exercises and exercises to get in my body. So there's, there's a few neat tricks and hacks like that. And it's even hard to explain how much that reduces stress. I'm still waiting for that. So let's do it. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm about to go on stage in 30 minutes. I'm getting really excited. I hope you're looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Social media reaction good. Hyvä. 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 Tosi hyvä, tosi hyvä. Mulla on hyvä fiilis. Mm. 
This year's winner, whose slides will be available via the Brella app, uh, is a growth and marketing expert, a serial entrepreneur, and an excellent public speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce the winner of the 2019 yeah. Nordic Business Forum Speaker Contest, Ansi Rautari. Ladies and gentlemen, what a phenomenal opportunity it is to be here today. My name is Ansi Rantanen. I'm the Finland CEO of a Dutch education company called Growth Tribe Academy. What we do and what I do is analyze the fastest growing companies in the world. One thing that we see a lot these days is that these hyper fast growth companies are incredibly experiment driven. And therefore, I'm confident that experimentation will play a critical role in your future growth trajectory as well. So let's say that we in this room, we are the innovation department of a toothpaste company. We need to create a brand, a professional looking brand. We need to create a website for that brand. And then we also need to create a chatbot. We're going to create these three things that I just mentioned in five minutes here on stage. Ethereum changed my life. Who said that? I mean, we all know that startup testimonials are fake. So how about we go with George Clooney? I need to go in here and grab this snippet of code, go into the website settings, plug that in there, 15 seconds left. Uh, publish, change the URL to join T Ethereum, subdomain available, publish that site, and ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand and we have a website which is live, and hopefully we have a chatbot that works. Hello? Would you be interested in signing up for a private beta? Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, that was that in five minutes. <laughs> that was pretty stressful. That was, that was pretty stressful. The reason I wanted to show you this live demo is because I actually wanted to show you hands-on how easy rapid experimentation can be. I mean, we created a brand, a website, and a chatbot in less than five minutes. And this way we can start gathering some valuable user feedback already today, instead of in six months. They found that the best predictor of team success is something called psychological safety, which basically means that team members feel like they can take risks and be vulnerable in front of their colleagues. I mean, research has shown that 50% of employees don't speak up when they feel that they have something to say. So psychological safety is incredibly important. How do we as business leaders go about creating psychological safety in the workplace? The first is that we need to underscore the importance of getting everybody's ideas and contribution to our whole team and our company, right? And secondly, this is really straightforward, but we actually need to ask for honest feedback. We need to encourage people to speak up. And when they do, we need to thank them for it, right? We want to create a positive feedback loop. And finally, so as leaders, we need to go first. We need to lead by example. You, ladies and gentlemen, us in this room, we have the phenomenal opportunity to drive that change in our companies. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past 16 minutes, I've truly felt like I've been allowed to be myself. I've experimented, I did the live demo, I spoke honestly from my heart for the psychological safety that we've created in this room today together. I truly thank you. Okay, so people are really now streaming out of the 
uh, seminar hall, so there will be lots and lots of people in the lobbies shortly. I think I've worked so many years in events business that I, at one point, I realized that I don't really get stressed about event situations. I might get tired. Everybody gets tired if you um, don't have enough time to sleep or you are so excited about things and you just keep working and so you are tired. But one of the best compliments that I've received from others has been that I can be very good at putting people at ease. So, uh, and somebody sometimes called me a queen of calm uh, in a very hectic event environment. And I think that is something that sticks with me and I, I understand that it's maybe a rare quality in situations where maybe some other people would freak out or panic or create nervousness around them. I guess I, guess I do the opposite. Tulkaa vaan rohkeasti, tulkaa vaan rohkeasti pidemmälle tuolta lyhenee kanssa näin. No niin, lähtikin todella rohkeasti. Eli katsotaan. Okay, so south looks really good and west doesn't look too bad either. So really good job. Okay, now you can take the place. Good luck, good luck. So we have as one of the surprise artists before the general session begins. We have a group of ballerinas that are coming all the way from Peru. I have been their contact person. Now I'm super excited to meet them. They have been asking about me. I have been asking about them. So in just a few minutes, I'll actually be able to see them. This event gives me hope. The other speakers that I, I heard. And just the variety of people I met and the different kind of organizations represented, it was just a great experience. I can't imagine somebody in this region not just benefiting from this in a great way. Powerful speakers, powerful audience, and I really hope that it's spreading, it will be spreading to an entire Scandinavia. The audience was so curious and enthusiastic and uh, excited to learn. I felt like I could have, I could have taken questions all day. Dreams come true when we work hard. Fantastic. Dreams, dreams do come true when you work hard. Congratulations once again. A big round of applause. Wow. Wow. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, I'll head back there. <laughs> I'll try to give them a tour now if they have enough time because they actually have a really tight schedule here in Helsinki because they want to get to know everything about Finland in the times that they have here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great. Thank you to all of you. You can't imagine how important. Great to hear. Great to hear. 
Thank you all. Thank you. Hola, yo soy Nasira. Yo he estado en contacto con ustedes. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, encantada. Hola. 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 She's really happy to see you again. <laughs> when did you guys see each other? We've seen uh, each other many times. Oh. Ella dice que está muy muy orgullosa de ustedes. Ya se han movido alrededor de aquí. You guys have moved around here already, a little bit, un poco. Okay. Okay. Gracias. Gracias. Lo voy a abrir ahora mismo para ver qué es. Okay. Do you want to see it? Uy, igualita. Sí. They're saying it had never been like that, that good. It was, estuvo perfecto. Wow, qué chulo. Me lo puedo poner ahora mismo. Cuando me vaya esta noche, por si me da frío, ya estoy lista. ¿Qué, qué es lo que hace esto? Como Es como llavero. Ok, ay, qué lindo. Ok. Para la suerte. Para la suerte, necesito mucha. Así que me ayuda mucho eso. They wanted to go to a competition in Orlando, in the States, a dancing competition, but they were trying to get money for it. And we found out about them, and then we brought them here, and they're going to Orlando by NBF. It's a school, like the teacher, the one with the black hair. Yeah. Uh, she opened a school for kids with low income, like with families with low income, yeah. so then they can like get free ballet class classes there. Yeah and they were running all around and going down. Well, you probably saw them on the slide. Yeah, I don't think the security guard has had as much fun as he had with all of them. Ah, pues quizás por eso fue que yo, que yo no supe. Conocen a Ville. Muchas gracias. Chao. Muchísimas gracias a ustedes por estar aquí. No, no, no. Para nosotros ha sido un honor tenerlas aquí. Muchas gracias. Hi. Thank you, thank you. Wow, I have never been here before. First time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> one of the girls made this, uh, the eight-year-old one. She made this herself. That's a lot of talent for an eight-year-old besides all the dancing that they did. I don't know. No surprise that the line is getting long already for the George Clooney for the opportunity. So people are, the first class customers have a chance to take a photo with George Clooney. You cooking? Yeah. 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 Did you guys eat the food yet? Yeah. Oh, I did. I need to go. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you all. One of the most memorable moments is a moment after Arnold Schwarzenegger ended his speech. And a VIP evening had, had started or was about to start. And he left the backstage. We were walking together towards the next room he was going to for some reason stopped, take a few steps to the side and took two classes, gave me the other one and said, now it's time to celebrate. <laughs> and it was kind of funny. <laughs> yes, you are guessing right. Ladies and gentlemen, Arnold Schwarzenegger! Sorted. Yeah, nailed it. Nicely done. Feels good. Yeah, no. Always when the event has gone well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations on an ass kicking two days. I'm not allowed to say it on stage, but you guys fucking rule! You are amazing. I'm shaking right now. <laughs> thank you for not only taking care of our customers, thank you for taking care of each other. We you are you. great. Aww. Okay, hey, thank you so much. I think among the most memorable moments from our events has been when the event is ended 
and the whole team who pulled it together. And there's this sense of achievement that we did it together and uh, everything has gone well. The customers have been happy and you just feel like we did it together. I've had 50 years experience of being a business person and it's trying to share those ideas, trying to hope that a few, a few little ideas stick and uh, that people will go back and run even better businesses as a result. It just feels like people care here and, and that's really coming through I think in the audience that you generally feel that they want to be here and that they're very present. You cannot do experimentation if it's not at the highest level. ANSI did I think the world's best presentation ever where in four minutes he made an experiment and that's great, that's the behavior. I get to do what I'm actually super passionate about and I get to challenge myself every day. Like that is my ultimate dream. Let's not forget, this entire forum is being done in a second language, English, to those who are in the audience. And yet, we are talking about some extremely complex philosophical ideas of management, business, ethics, integrity. All in all, you put it together, the level of engagement is really most impressive. And what we're being asked today, and what technology is enabling us to do, is to leap faster and higher than ever before. This is fun. Hey, do you need the helmet? Uh, not at the moment. You wanna go in? Can you borrow it for him? Yeah, I can. Because we're gonna go for the networking hall info desk now. Yeah, okay, I can. How does it feel? How does it feel? Is that a question for me? Can you shut down the camera and help me a bit? Yes. <laughs> We've got animals like this frightening bear. Uh, etched, not even etched, sculpted into the wood. And this dude is filming me, filming myself. Pretty meta. <laughs> Something that is playing right. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio. And now with us, we have here the stars of the documentary. Salla Seppä, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Anse Rantanen, welcome. And of course, we have Hans-Peter Siefen uh, participating remotely. Welcome again. Thank you. Well, Hans-Peter, I have to begin with you. What has changed in your thinking since the documentary was filmed? In my thinking? I, I think... Uh, uh earlier on well it of course relates to this new new normal at least at least the current new normal i i think earlier earlier on we were much more careful or spent longer time uh before deciding to test something new and and try to think it through um in length uh now now we have needed to test things much more quickly and, and try things through trial and error much more than than before. Just like Ansi thought us yeah. in and Because Ansi is smiling here. <laughs> yes, so that, that's that's an in, uh, an important change in in thinking as well. We are we 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 needed to start uh, actually producing a product in the in the digital only world world very quickly uh, since all of the physical meetings were basically uh, not allowed at all so that's a good change that's a very good change i feel so a lot of mvps and trial and error 
And, and Salah, uh, in terms of customer experience and also as someone who is very good with people, uh, how has your job changed due to the diminished in real life contact with people? Yeah, it is a very good question. So, of course, um, uh, customer experience is, is always done with people. Um, it's in the interactions of people in different kinds of ways. And it is very true that this new normal means very different things there. So, of course, we, we miss the times when we were able to work as a team physically together in the same place. And, um, and uh, now it just requires a totally different way of, of thinking and looking after people, your own team and, uh, and our customers as well, because we are not in the same space with them. So um, I, I would say like many things have changed around us, but the very important things have uh, stayed and, and they remain. And that is really about looking after the people you work with and then your customers, of course. So uh, there's more one-on-one -on -one, uh, with people and having conversations that are not necessarily work-related and stuff like that online now. Yes, I mean, we try to look for ways to, to keep kind of the team uh, actively engaged um, in various ways. And also, of course, with the customers, we have to look for new ways to, to, to remain relevant for them and uh, to make them feel um, that we look after them. And of course, that has then meant uh, quite new, new, new things, sometimes also more one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussions with our customers. Ansi, uh, tell us a bit about the speaker contest. Uh, how did that prepare you for the main event? Um, well, in many ways. I mean, you know, I, I think I, I personally looked as, you know, the, the speaker contest and the actual, um, you know, competition and the event very similarly. I mean, it requires a big amount of preparation. You you get equally nervous, etc. So, I mean, it's very similar in multiple ways, but I think, you know, for, for the speaker competitions, um, I think for both the semifinal and the final, I probably did around, you know, 30 iterations of my yeah. speak before then doing the final sort of set. And I think, you know, for, for then the final presentation, um, you know, the workload was at least similar, if not even more. So I think it prepared me, you know, greatly because like in order to deliver a phenomenal 15 minutes or 17 minutes, uh, you know, it requires tens of hours of work. So, yeah. I mean, in that, in that sense, the process for preparing for the big stage was very similar, you know, to the competition because it's just, uh, you know, only hard work in many iterations and a lot of feedback will, you know, or at least enables me to get to the level where I wanted to get. And you spent some time uh, before the event even started. You can see it in the documentary. You were there a day or two before. Yeah, so Hape, Hape and the team were very polite in, in um, you know, giving me the opportunity to spend some time on the stage before the actual main event. So, I mean, you know, it's by far the biggest stage that I've ever spoken on. And I felt that, you know, in order for me to be in the most comfortable place, you know, the more I could spend time on that stage before the actual event, the better off I would be. And, you know, the more important part was actually... Uh, you know, I didn't need to spend a lot of time on the stage on the days before, but just so that I can get a sense of the room so that I can actually practice uh, visualization exercises. Yeah. So that's quite a bit of what I did, um, you know, before then doing the final presentation, you know, just as Formula One drivers do, I sort of did quite a few visualization exercises going through the speech, where I'm going to be, how I'm going to position myself, you know, how I'm going to do the body language, etc., so that, you know, my mind would feel like I've done it tens of times before. And I think that, you know, then gave me the, 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 the confidence um, and the general good feeling yeah. and, and being comfortable, you know, doing the talk. And, and I think... And I think, you know, I think it was very successful, the preparation in that yeah. way. Yes, I mean, and th this is something that Nordic Business Forum has always been very good at, like, like, the, like the speaker experience also. Like, like in 2013, I can still remember Jack Welch, uh, who has been in seminars all around the world. He, he was amazed about the speaker experience. Hoppe, uh, how did you came up with this like concept? How did you understood that this needs to be a special event for the speakers also? Uh, well, I, I think uh, 
in the early stages, I think it was just simple logic. I mean, uh, if we want the event to run really, really well, the speakers need to need to be at their best, and we need to spend time on on briefing them well, uh, making them feel comfortable about the setup, and 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 well, we have always been very ambitious in in the quality of the event as a whole. So it has just been a part of that process. And of course, we love the speakers. We love their content. We we uh, learn from it ourselves. And many of the speakers we have ever ever brought in have been dreams that some someday it would be the greatest thing to be able to bring that person in and in jack welch's case that was indeed also the case i i first uh was able to hear him speak at world business forum in new york back in 2011 and and he was at least from my point of view he was the best best person at that event also patrick lencioni whom we then got much much later on in 2017 if i'm not wrong uh it took m even more time with lencioni than than with jack welch to bring him in but many of these are really really important moments for us when we are able to have them here to teach us and our audience when you were looking at the documentary how did that feel now after everything that has happened since at least for me personally, I really miss the hugging. You really pay attention to how many hugs there are between the team members, between um, uh, us and our customers. Uh, hugging really was uh, one of those things that I think uh, feels very natural at our event. People have such a sense of uh, belonging and sense of community there. So I think that is one thing that certainly uh, sort of uh, catches your eye there. And, and, and it's a weird reaction looking at the documentary, people yes. hugging like, don't do that. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what, what, what you feel now when you look at it. And and that is, of course, something we miss. Um, so so that is something that kind of um, uh, is, is, is certainly a part that we haven't been able to do now. But, uh, but I think it just brings back so many good memories and uh, and and it really brings back the whole idea of why we do this and we believe that people want to be together and they want to experience something together and uh, and uh, and being able to be in the same room um, it is a, a different experience when you when you kind of sense how the others are feeling as well so it feels nostalgic it feels great it feels like uh, something we all look forward to having again yeah i i think so too I honestly think that there will be more appreciation to live events after this. Or am I completely wrong? <laughs> I mean, I definitely think so. Like, as, as a speaker, you know, you probably know it, Henka, as well. Like, as a speaker, it feels, I mean, vastly different speaking in front of a live audience than it does, you know, in a virtual setup. I mean, yeah, this is good considering the situation and it's great that you know uh people still are interested in in learning stuff etc but you know as, as a speaker um the experience is like it's 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 not even on the same kind of a level um uh, although i do have to say at nordic business forum it was a bit weird because the people were so far away yeah. that that you know i actually couldn't really hear a lot of what was going on, but there's still a different vibe. You can feel the vibe in the room, which I think, you know, as a speaker, is the most important data point of feedback that you can get. So yeah, I, I do like, um, you know, for me, probably the, the primary emotions of, of watching the documentary is, uh, you know, the great memories, um, you know, that it sort of brings up. I mean, it was a very special day in my life. So of course, having some kind of video footage of that is really, really great. Uh, but then also like, yeah, maybe a, a sense of like gratitude and, and also, you know, a small sense of, you know, missing, um, missing that kind of a setup because, you know, even though Virtual events are, are, I think, good, you know, considering the situation. Uh, they won't replace the experience of doing something face-to-face, -face, offline, etc. So, yeah. Uh, Hape, uh, it, it takes two years to create an event, uh, sometimes even, even longer. But the production begins two years prior to the event. Where does that creation begin? Well, two years prior, uh, it, it begins with... Uh, theming, uh, brainstorming on the theming based on the latest, latest again, and and speakers. Uh, so that's where it begins two years prior. Well, multiple years prior in terms of 
of uh, the venue choice or at least preliminary uh, venue choices and so forth. But that's approximately where it begins. We, we start making active contacts for with speakers regarding that specific event in two years time. And when do you need to close it uh, about the teams and the speakers? Uh, well, the theme theme usually uh, before the well, finally, finally closed before the event is launched. But there, of course, needs to be flexibility in terms of still adjusting it and and still uh, discussing with the speakers on how how we should maybe change the topics that we originally pla planned for them to cover, etc. Um, so so that's that's roughly roughly how how it is with them and that, that that's the sort of like the hard facts of the production but how is the experience and the flow of the event and all that that stuff that actually makes the event how, how do you approach that yeah it's it's a nice long process again and when you um, create an experiential event like Nordic Business Forum has been and I must say that I've been a customer myself to start with and I, I experienced it as a customer and I was blown away like many others have been because it was so unique and so different and uh, now when I joined the company for, for more than four years ago I realized how many details go into the planning and what we do at Nordic Business Forum uh, pulling together an event like this from an experience experience um, point of view is that you just have to think of so many details with so many people and we have of course a production team within our team but we also work so closely with so many collaboration partners who are experts in their own fields so uh, that's of course how it starts to come together you, you think of the customer journeys and the, everything that is happening there and how do we make it smooth and energizing for our customers and of course then the team who is working on pulling it together well how, how, how do you help the collaboration collaborators to create the same experience that is in your head? What are, what are some of the details there? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think one of the secrets that um, we've been able to, to use here is, of course, that we have uh, very kind of simple principles that we live by. And, uh, and, and, and there are principles such as uh, treat the customer as if um, he or she was your friend. So it's not really more, more complex that, or complicated than that sometimes. And, and when you kind of, um, when you um, sort of... Um, when you summarize things in, a, in such a way that everybody can understand them and that they understand their own role in creating the experience, um, then I think people feel really empowered and, and, and you know, we get everybody involved. Yeah, and, and Hape, you're part of uh, almost all or maybe all of the speaker briefings. So uh, what do you do in there? To, I mean, obviously, they have their own keynotes and their own topics, but, but you're trying to adjust it with your own themes. W what do you do there? Yeah, well, I have been, I have been just that since, since the start until last year. And now we have, of course, a new executive producer, Andreas Kustos, whom, whom I'm advising. So I, I, I'm not there any longer in all of the speaker briefings at all myself. But... Uh, but yeah, it has been also uh, a learning process, which continues, of course, until as, as long as we live, I guess, um, on what what things are really important to be covered with the speakers. And, and it depends on the speaker as well a bit on what level of detail they, they are interested in to learn before they arrive. But we, we of course, try to try to make sure that everything is considered and and tested and practiced and and uh, everyone feels comfortable well the documentary was touching uh, uh, and and it made me sort of like think that that there is a broader meaning and broader idea behind the whole Nordic business forum uh, and is that so Hoppe, or uh, am I am I making this up <laughs> Well, I'm I'm very happy that you feel that way. So, I, I guess I guess uh, it's nothing that we can we can just dictate and say say from here and and try to try to make people accept it. I guess it needs to build from experience. And I guess we have we have then done done a good job uh, through this documentary as well, at least in terms of what Henka thinks. So I'm happy with that. 
<laughs> I'm the main audience of the documentary. But honestly, uh, you were part of the uh, Nordic Business Experience last year. And, and how, how did that affect you personally? Great question. How did that affect me personally? I think I think on 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 definitely on a mul- multiple levels, but um, you know, if if there's maybe you know one or two things that I would highlight is is first of all, you know, having an opportunity like that. So having having an opportunity to to speak in front of you know seven thousand six hundred business leaders is is very unique. And, you know, personally, I have high standards and I want to bring my A game, you know, and, and make sure that, you know, my, my speech is fantastic. Um, so I think, you know, that changed me in a, in, in a pretty concrete way, you know, just having that opportunity um, to sort of play at, you know, sort of the top level in the world, right? Like, like people yeah. that are also on stage are right now, you know, considered, you know, some of the best speakers on the planet. So being able to, you know, share the stage in the sort of top echelons of keynote speaking, that was in itself a great experience because that also pushed my limits and pushed me to sort of, you know, discover what is the level that I can perform at. And and that was great in, in many ways. It's like, you know, it's it's a bit like, you know, drawing to the sort of Formula One metaphor before. It was like, you know, someone would come and tell you, Henka, that you know, you want to be a racing car driver and in, in three months you're gonna race in the Formula One competition. You know, it's it's pretty crazy and it's pretty yeah. intense to get to experience something like that. And you know, I was very happy to also see that that I performed well, like my speech was very well liked, it got good performance reviews, etc. So that was great. So that's one thing. And I think, you know, that that like gives gave me, um, you know, a new level of, of self confidence gave me a new level of understanding of, of what I can actually, you know, do and achieve and, and all of that was very reaffirming and, and definitely a, a transformative experience. Uh, and, and the very positive. So, I mean, yeah, it was a great opportunity yeah. and I learned a lot about myself, you know, in the process as well. And this is maybe something I, 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 I wanted to point out with my question about the, the broader meaning. And I don't know if this is a meaning of, of Hans-Peter or Salla, but, but always in the event, I feel a lot of psychological security, psychological safety. That's a, that's a theme for you, that's a theme for me, but it's a high level um, uh, event uh, with the top people in the world. So it's a high risk event also. But at the same time, with the speakers, with everyone included, it it feels surprisingly safe all the time. So th- this is something that must be in the design process. <laughs> well, at least uh, from, from my perspective, I, I'm also very happy that you feel that way. And uh, it is, of course, something that we pay a lot of a- attention to, that people would have a, a great environment where they could really focus on the learning and enjoying the experience, um, networking, getting the most out of the, the event experience. And, and uh, our driver is really to make sure that they don't have to care about anything else. Everything should work really smoothly and energizingly. And that people would feel like we look after them, the whole staff, everybody who is pulling it together. Uh, so in, in terms of the design process there, so it is very true that we, of course, focus a lot on that. But but there was one risky point, because, I mean, one of the big uh, things in moving from Jyväskylä to Helsinki was that some of us were afraid that some of the magic would be lost in the in the process because the Juvascula was sort of like an event cocoon where we'd all all gather. But but the atmosphere did not change. Why was that, Hoppe? <laughs> well, I just remember this uh, moment from backstage in NBF 2013 when I when I asked the host of that, that year, the MC of that year, who was Andre Sacker, and, and I asked him, what do you think the audience will think? 
<laughs> when when I announce when I announce that uh, next year will be held in Hels will be held in Helsinki, the event itself, even if we are still here in Yvaskula, uh, but but uh, because of the international travel connections and hotel capacities and all, and he just said that well. I'm glad that it's you and not me who needs to announce it. <laughs> so, so, so definitely, it was a a, uh, a a frightening thing to do, and and not something I was personally happy happy of either. So, but naturally, it was it was a step we 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 wanted to take to be able to make the event more international and grow it still. Um, and, and we are on that path with internationalization in other means as well, starting in new countries and so forth. So were there any special steps you made to secure the atmosphere that was in Yuvaskula to move it to Helsinki too? Well, well, I, I, I don't think um, that's, that's the changes then uh, probably more of the feel of the ones who live in Helsinki or close to Helsinki on the travel together to Yuvaskula and maybe not having space in a hotel and needing to rent a cottage or, <laughs> or something being being far away far away from from the work environment but it's the same it's the same for probably a half of the people nowadays as well otherwise i i, I think um i think it's uh, still um it's still the same means in which we create atmosphere undependent on the city where the event is organized. Let it be also in Stockholm, Oslo or someday somewhere else. Uh, well, cultural differences in, in that case, not that much in between Yuvaskula and Helsinki, but, but otherwise. So I think uh, we, we, we have just been trying to improve uh, and innovate year over year with the, with the experience that we have gotten on the previous year and from all the all the benchmarks we do during the year and imagine uh, through the innovation we do. From Hape, uh, we heard about his ideas of where the event industry is going in uh, 2021 and beyond. But Salla, what is your take on that? What kind of events we will have uh, post pandemic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is that is a very important and 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 of course a question that everybody is thinking about at the moment. Um, uh, it is true that now we can't meet physically, so I think it's better still to do some events, uh, to have gatherings, to connect people, um, have some joint experiences in in a virtual world. But I, I really hope we will, and there will be lots of innovation, I'm sure, on that front, um, making it more more experiential for people also to, to attend over the screens. But I hope uh, there will be innovation on the, on the sort of COVID-19 area as well, so that we would be able to move over from that phase and, and go back to events where people can meet physically, because that really has been the core, um, core purpose of events as well uh, before. Ah, so what do you see in the future? Good question. Uh, I, I never... You know, I, I'm not a fan of trying to predict the future. It's, it's been proven many times that even industry experts who try to predict the future are, are like equally good at predicting the future as monkeys throwing darts. And I'm a bit, a bit of a pessimist maybe in that regard. Um, but an optimist in the regard that I do think that a lot of the learnings that will, um, you know, take out of this experience... Uh, will be a, a forcing function to to great to create a lot better experiences in the future. So, what are the innovations? What are the learnings that this um, you know pandemic will will bring upon us? I think it's a bit too early to say right now. I think it's a bit hard to say. I think you know, as Hoppe said, you know, they're running a lot of experiments, which I think is great, by the way, um, <laughs> uh, regarding you know format and and etc. But I think. It It forces everybody, everybody in in the ecosystem, um, to sharpen up their game, to to really um, try to maximize the learning in this um, stage. Because because I mean the, the the overall demand for learning hasn't disappeared. People yeah. still, um, you know, are desiring for knowledge. Uh, you know, technology is still growing exponentially, which means that you know there'll be even more demand in the future for for learning new things so so that's not going anywhere but i mean it's it's really 
upon you know the stakeholders such as the event organizers, Nordic Business Forum, the speakers, to 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 step up their game and um, and try to you know deliver a better experience for for everybody involved. And that's something that I'm personally excited about. But at what as to what those learnings will be, you know, we can have a conversation in a year and then we'll low and know a lot more. Right now, I think it's hard to say, and I, I think you know the 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 sort of the, the, the cards are still finding their way on the table. And, and we'll, we'll see where we end up. But I'm optimistic and I, and I want to be and try to be. Yeah, and this is, this is an interesting time to be living. It is horrifying at times, but at the same time, like I said in the beginning, it's a time for innovation and now we're adapting those innovations also. But one particular, uh, like peculiar thing is that, that this should have been the year of VR and AR and nothing really happened in, in that space. But maybe that's off to maybe a couple of years ahead. But thank you very much, Salla. Thank you very much, Ansi. Thank you very much, Hans-Peter. This was a great conversation about the future of the events and your feelings uh, regarding Nordic Business Forum 2019. And though... Uh, we were behind the scenes in the documentary, we did not actually see the people who were behind the behind-the-scenes documentary. But gladly, I'm able to introduce the makers of the behind-the-scenes of Nordic Business Forum documentary, Serge, Georgius and Roman from Vita Pictura. Hello from Vita Pictura, a production team behind leaders who changed the world film. The work is finally done, and we're happy to finally reach the premiere. Ever since the first meeting and discussion of this project with Nordic Business Forum, we understood something special is about to happen. Getting a chance to dive deep and study characters behind the scenes of an event like this really is a unique opportunity. Thanks to this project, Vita Pictura's team was able to pivot towards documentary filmmaking even more, which helped us to evolve further, testing our filmmaking skills. Since the beginning, we wanted to make films, and we're happy to be back in the place where we always wanted to be, producing documentaries. Storytelling has always been our true passion and we're excited for the opportunity to share the film. The documentary reveals who are the people behind the best leadership event in the Nordics and how they organize such a massive conference. The film studies various issues one faces when trying to build such a company. Working under pressure, dealing with stress, fear of public speaking and teamwork. Every company has a similar story about people behind them with their own issues and stories but not every company dedicates so much attention to details, planning and customer success as Nordic Business Forum. Leaders Who Changed the World is the documentary film celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Nordic Business Forum. It proved to be a great learning experience for the whole production team. We hope that all of you learn something new after watching this film. For example, how to run a big organization or an event, or uh, how to deal with stress, or, for example, how to prepare for an important speech in front of a large audience. Thank you, the whole Nordic Business Forums team, for allowing us to make this documentary about your impeccable crew and your unique brand. We are now coming closer to the end of this online event. We have been talking about the future of event industry, and it seems like that we're seeing now innovation on unprecedented levels, and that's a good thing. But at the same time, we understand all that we miss those live gatherings, and there is nothing you can exchange that to. So hopefully in the future, we will see different kind of events, and those will be much more engaging than the events that we used to prior to the pandemic. And as a person who loves innovation, uh, I welcome that. So thank you for watching and participating in this premiere of the leaders that changed the world behind the scenes of Nordic Business Forum documentary. And of course, we all hope to see you in real life in 2021. Bye bye. <laughs>